have you ever watched a movie and like not even halfway through it, probably within the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, you go, what the heck am I watching? What is this movie? Let me pick up the cover to figure out what I'm watching. Because I like to watch all my movies blind, where I've seen trailers and stuff like that. There's a handful of movies I can tell you. I've seen the trailer before I saw the movie. Fantastic Four was one of them, 2015. But This Is England was one where I didn't know what, no, This Is England, sorry about that. Dead Man's Shoes. This is England was actually, I, did, I already was, I get into it before watching that one. I read the description. But Dead Man's Shoes, which I thought was a horror movie going into it. Tropic Thunder, I'm completely surprised <laughs> seeing that trailer, like I seen the opening of that movie. And then, Sucker Punch. This movie here, this movie. Based off the cover and the back of the cover here, it looks like it's gonna be more action flick. They have five women on the cover, with guns, swords, and there's like a giant samurai a dragon on it. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe some medieval steampunk movie, you know. Uh, no. Nothing like I expected, and I was completely lost. I picked the cover up within 20 minutes, like, what is, put the, the case up within 20 minutes and had to read the description of the movie, because what I was seen on screen was not what was on this case. And I am quite appalled, quite appalled about what I just watched. And I'm about to go ahead and break it down on this episode of Movie Breakdown. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And what is Movie Breakdowns? A movie review series where we look at new and old movies, give them a grade A through L, plus and minus do count. And there's a movie you want to watch or review, please put in the comment section below and I'll try to get to it as best I can. Also, have a Patreon. On that Patreon, at Ali, I think it's Ali underscore Zaka, Ali Dad Zaka, or just Ali Zaka, wherever it is at this point. On the Patreon, you can get new reviews before they come out. Like, for example, this one's coming out in November, I believe. And it's already on Patreon right now in the month of August. On top of that, you're going to get um, movie reviews before they come out. Trailer reactions, trailer reviews, first thoughts, and a bunch of more stuff. Plus, first come, first serve when it comes to requests. You mention it, I get on it. Now, let's get into today's review of 2011 Sucker Punch, another Zack Snyder movie. And put it this way, this is like first Zack Snyder, like he wrote this movie himself or directed it himself, and I believe he wrote it actually. Let me double check that who the writer is. Oh yeah, no, he's the writer. Zack Snyder is the screenplay guy. He wrote this movie, wrote this movie, and Zack Snyder is great with visuals, CGI, phenomenal, no problem there. Lighting, great, you know. Do worked on 300, did a great job, but this is Snyder's like one of his first original screen rights where this is not based off a comic book or anything, this is literally based off of his own idea. And a movie about dreams to me was done pretty poorly. This idea is a movie about dreams, a dream within a dream almost like, and it was done horribly. First, Inception came out this same year, and they did a dream really well. And almost like what they did wrong in Sucker Punch, Inception did better. They did right. When you do a movie about dreams and somebody going into a dream sequence, you have to tell the audience what's going on because we won't know exactly what's happening. You just switch from normal day life to a dream and then don't ever come back to it and then go to the end of it. Then you're like, what the heck I just watched? While Inception broke that, they brought a character in and they literally told her this is how things work. So when you're watching it, you're getting explained everything, but at the same time, watching them train and work. That's how you do a dream sequence. And that way, when you go into the dream, everything plays out and you're not lost and confused. This movie just was like, <laughs> F that. <laughs> We're throwing everything all at you at once. And I'm like, what am I watching? There's 20 minutes where the movie cuts in. You learn about Baby Doll, which is the name of the character's name. You learn about Baby Doll, who is played by Emily Browning. You learn about her abusive stepfather. Mother died. She tried to fight back the stepfather and ended up killing her sister. The stepfather put her in this, like, this um, psychotic ward, this psych ward, 
where she's like, now okay, now she's in a mental hospital. But the mental hospital is all dungy and dingy. And you meet Oscar Isaac, who's blue, his name is character. And he's like telling the stepdad, everything will be fine, we'll take care of her here, stuff like that. And then it turns from a mental war into a burlesque not sex house I guess but less sex house strip club not really a strip club it's a place where women get on stage and dance and be provocative but at the same time they can they supposed to do sexual favors with the guests and they don't ever say it's a sex house but it's pretty much alluded to that's what's going on here and this is the dream that you fall into but it happened with it happened so fast I had to like what the heck am I watching now girls are wearing you know, short skirt being from like mental hospital clothing to short skirts and like burlesque outfits. I'm like, okay, so maybe the first 20 minutes of this movie was actually a facade. It wasn't really happening. This is the real thing. So I'm going along with this and then the girls are learning how to dance and they meet baby doll and make baby doll dance. And every time she dances, which she goes into her own head and gets this giant action pack like battle against a samurai and there's another scenario where she's fighting against um, Nazi robots and there's an, and zombie Nazis. There's another scenario where she's fighting against trolls from Lord of the Rings and uh, fighting a dragon and there's another scenario where she's on a truck on a plane on a plane but on a um, train and fighting robots and you're like what is going on here okay so every time she dances she goes into her mind and then this is what happens. I thought maybe one time she wasn't going to dance at all. She was going to try to dance and no music and she's just going to lose it all. But she needed music and she started dancing. Apparently her dance is so provocative and so raw and so talented and so amazing that we don't get to see it as an audience. We just see this generic fight battle scene. And okay, I love a good action flick. I love a good action flick, but I need substance. I need story. When the story does not give you give you substance and you're just watching an action flick for no reason what what are we here for what are we here for like i'm down with a, a samurai fight and this giant samurai is fighting this woman who's kicking butt and flipping all over the place but it had to make sense it just appeared out of nowhere and i'm just like oh okay you just Decide thing. Oh, people love 300, so we're just gonna throw action at them, and they'll love this movie. That's not how it works, boo boo. Not how it works at all. Like you need to have substance with your story, Zack Snyder. And I don't know what you're thinking with this when you decided to go that route, but it did not work at all. Nope. And the movie turns out they had to get. Four things, or five things, to get out of the out of the mental war. She teams up with this girl named Rocket, this girl named um, Sweet Pea, Blondie, and Amber, and they have to team up to work together. Amber and Blondie, by the way, who just there, like they both get killed in this movie. I don't care. Their storyline wasn't really flushed out. You care more about Sweet Pea and Rocket, really more about Rocket than Sweet Pea, and but they they really don't flesh it out and at the end of the story um, Sweet Pea end up escaping thanks to Baby Doll but the movie cuts back to real life so after Sweet Pea gets uh, Sweet Pea gets out after they escape and Sweet Pea gets out um, Baby Doll gets punched in the face and it cuts back to reality which she just got lobotomy and lobotomized and then you see all the other things throughout the movie, all the things that happen. And then you see Oscar Isaac trying to make out with the lobotomized baby doll. And you're like, what is happening here? Like, okay, there's a scene early in the movie where Oscar Isaac said, like, you know, I want to play with my toys. He called all the women his toys, which is really messed up. And he tried to pretty much rape baby doll. And baby doll fights him off. And in the end of the movie, he started kissing her and making out with her, who's completely dead. And then the police come in and they break, they like, come in and they um, arrest Oscar Isaac character. And you're still wondering, like, okay, so the movie was majority of a dream, 
but all the things that happen in the dream happen in real life. How they do all these things? Okay, sure. And some things didn't make sense to me. So one, they need a map, which was that actually made sense. They need a map to get a layout of the um, mental wars they can escape. And Sweet Pea ended up getting that. The next one, they need a lighter, which it could have got a lighter from anybody. It got a lighter from this high roller that came in, and the mayor of the town, I believe, that came in, and he looking for his lighter. And I'm like, why do you take the lighter from the most like the richest person. Why didn't they take the life from a random joke? They took it from a random bloke, not joke, but a random bloke. They took it from this guy. What's up with that? That makes no sense. And then the knife, which they had the knife at the beginning of the movie, they could just snuck into the kitchen, got it, but they had to play some dance to get the knife. I think the, the chef was always there, apparently. And then fire, that was the lighter, knife. It was one more thing they needed. Oh, the key to get out, which around Oscar Isaac's neck, and then Baby Doll was the last thing, which was the secret. And the movie's like, well, maybe she wasn't the main character in the movie. Maybe the story wasn't her story. And she actually says this. She actually says it, and, and like, they had to tell you that, oh, this is nothing for me. I'm not supposed to get out. You're supposed to get out, Sweet Pea. You're not even supposed to be here. And in the point of the movie, we learned that Sweet Pea wasn't supposed to be there. She was only there for her sister's sake. So she never was in a mental, she never in a mental state. She just went there because her sister escaped home. And she fought her sister. So this is for more about Sweet Pea escaping through the eyes of Baby Doll. Once again, a better story than what you actually see on a movie. Because the movie is just all over the place and just really convoluted. And it was like, blah. That's how I feel. Blah. And I put in my notes. I was like, I feel like I'm watching a movie of a movie of another movie. And if you were just done, if they didn't do all the action stuff, and they just would have left it as, you know, she's in this mental war, and she goes in her mind to try to escape, and she goes through, like, this whole dance burlesque thing to try to figure out ways to escape out of it. And she actually see the dances that would be so phenomenal. And to see her dance, and, you know, like, it was a dance movie of her and her passion and trying to escape be a distraction so her friends can set up stuff to escape I'm okay with that but this whole cutscene to the action stuff was just unnecessary and it just it, it really lacks substance to me in this movie good lord okay let's get into actors and actresses the actors movie is okay if nobody really besides Oscar Isaac who plays Blue Jones his stuff was really like good his acting was good everything about it but then the things his character did didn't make sense like his character comes into the room when the girls are cheering and like, what are we laughing about what are we cheering about he was like I don't see this stuff again and nothing really happened so you're already getting all mad about things that's not happening and then also Sweet Pea who's played by Abby Cornish she makes a thing in the movie where she's like if I say it's over it's over and she does the whole it's over so you have the group breakup scene after Isaac, Oscar Isaac comes into the room and pretty much disemboweled like shuts down everything. So you have the group breakup scene. Five minutes later, she's like, I'm back in the game. I'm helping out. What? Why did, was that even necessary? But Abby Corner, who played Sweet Pea, she was okay. Um, eh. As far as acting, she was okay. I feel like my camera's tilted now. Sorry, guys, if it is. Vanessa Hudgens, who played Blondie, she was just there. She was just there. Not even necessary to a movie. Jamie Chung played Amber. Jamie, I'm sorry. You got into two bad movies. From Dragon Ball Evolution to this movie. I'm sorry. Uh, Jenna Malone who played Rocket. She did good. She was good for what she was. I wasn't disappointed with her acting. Um, Abby Cornish I was kind of disappointed with, but Jenna was okay. Emily Browning who played Baby Doll. She was good. She was okay. Didn't really, for, for, for part of the movie, I was sitting there thinking like, does she not have lines? Is she not going to talk? Is she not going to say anything? And no, she probably say some stuff. Who am I looking for? Oh, Scott Glenn, who plays the wise man. He is in, I think, let me see. If I'm not wrong, he reminded me of the butler. And Spider-Man, I don't think that was him. No, it wasn't him. But he might be the butler in Spider-Man. He's in this movie. He was okay. He was this guy called the Wise Man who was a, like, 
the angel they talked about in this movie. There's an angel that you may know that you know you might not have that could be there. He was there just guiding them along the way and you know, showing up at the end of the movie as the savior for Sweet Plea. But yeah, that's that was, he's okay. Really, Oscar Isaac was the one who, to me, carried this movie. He did really great with his acting. Everybody else was just there. Alright. Music. Music was good. It was a lot of songs, popular songs you would hear, but like a different version of them. Um, Sweet Dreams Are Made Of These, or Sweet Dream Of Mine, I think the song is called. Opened up the movie, and I'm like, oh, this reminds me of... Um, Suicide Squad, where how they use all these different songs to play different throughout different scenes, but then the music kind of blurs together towards the end of the movie. You really don't know what you're listening to, it's just there. The CGI was great, the lighting was great. Zack Snyder can do great visuals. The CGI was phenomenal. I feel like at one point I was like watching an anime, uh, especially on that train fight scene, but only CGI can take you so much. Ash can only take you so much. When there's no substance, it's horrible. And this movie lacks substance. It lacks substance and lacked a good story. And it, the mindset was there, but it really wasn't executed well enough, and it really bothered me. Someone make a note of that man's bravery. Is this a Friday night movie? No. Great time. I'm going to grade Sucker Punch a D. If you've seen Sucker Punch, what do you think? Please put in the comment section below. And yeah, I really don't want to talk about this movie anymore. <laughs> like, what more do you want me to say? I just said it. It didn't like, it just it didn't lack substance. It lacked substance. It didn't have substance. And that's what it is. So D, that's what it's going to be. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Movie Breakdowns. See you guys next time. And keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, you want to see what else I'm doing in my normal life and other things that's going on, please follow me on Instagram at Ali underscore Zaka. I'll put it right here, right here around my face. Yep, right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Also, if you want more episodes of Movie Breakdowns or Grind Tour Success or whatever it is I'm doing on YouTube, you know what? Follow my page right here, like I said before, the little comment thing right there, right there, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, you watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns right here, and watch the last episode of Grind Tour Success right there. Other than that, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate y'all. See y'all next time, and keep being awesome.